Ladies and gentlemen, out of respect of Blackout Tuesday and what it stood for, on behalf of everybody here at the Essential Wrestling Podcast, the Eastern Observer, and all of our affiliated shows, we respectfully moved our shows to this Wednesday to allow all the voices to be heard. With that being said, it's wrestling time. Let's talk some wrestling. Episode 5 of the Essential Wrestling Podcast cannot be here, cannot thank you enough for being with us. Cannot be here without our friends at the Eastern Observer and our friends at the Blackjack Media Network. Thank you so much. Make sure to give them a like, a follow on all their social medias, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, everything they got. Help them support us so we can keep coming on for you. Al, as you know, it's been a very interesting week for me. You're going to have to yeah, educate yeah. Like I said, we missed you last week, Ty. I know uh, my good friends John and John, they came on. Uh, they got the hot tag in. Um, we will be seeing them again at some point, but uh, we missed you, pal. Uh, we, you know, we missed your insight. We're glad to have you back. I'm glad to see you again, buddy. I'm glad to be here. Episode five. This is a big, uh, this is a big night for us. We're at the we're at the half decade mark on our shows. That's it, Ty. This is episode five. This is our Empire Strikes Back episode. This is our Mega Powers Explode episode. This oh, we have breaking news. We even got new toys on. This is our Thank new you. little setup here. Oh my god, I think we just ruined Empire Strikes Back for everybody. But yeah, we're, uh, we got a new setup. We're live for the first time on Facebook Live. So, uh, Tyler, uh, without further ado, I think uh, let's just get to the stories here. We got a couple of headlines uh, to sum up uh, to summarize what we are possibly going to be what we are going to be talking about today. Uh, the Cruiserweight and Intercontinental champion, uh, Championship Tournament Finals are set. They're good to go. Uh, Chris Jericho calls out Mike Tyson last week. Uh, that was nuts. A couple roster changes as FTR, Matt Riddle, and Deion Perrazzo, um all have new homes. Um, we have our, uh, our In Your House picks um, sponsored yes. by ProWrestlingPick'em.com. That's going to be the main event of our show today. Uh, we're going to be uh, going over everything that is NXT In Your House coming up this Sunday. Uh, but first, we got a curtain jerk to show, Ty. Uh, last Friday night, uh, Jeff Hardy didn't really have the best start uh, of, a, of, a, of a wrestling episode here as we saw him taking him to police custody um, after what appeared to be, uh, I guess, somewhat of a, a, a drunk driving incident where Elias was injured and Jeff had alcohol on him. And uh, Ty, uh, this is kind of a hot topic. We're going to lead the show with this. Uh, your initial thoughts when you saw this. Yeah, I mean, so although I haven't been uh, t watching too much, I have been reading, trying to keep myself educated for the show. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things where it blends into the entire comeback story they have hyped up for him perfectly. Um, obviously, I know uh, a lot of people weren't happy with the angle. Um, obviously, Matt Hardy, uh, Rebby's, Rebby Hardy, uh, yeah. both voice there. Uh, displeasure uh, through social media pretty much almost immediately after the segment aired. Um, and there's some, something we spoke about in, uh, in the gorilla position before the show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, you know, those segments don't just happen. Like they, Jeff Hardy had to have the, give them the okay to do it. Yeah, 100%. For people to be upset about it is kind of a little ridiculous because there's no, especially on a topic like that where it's a guy with a known history of substance abuse through his entire career. Refer back to the Jeff Hardy and Sting match back in Impact way back when. Yep. Like, it's no, it's well known that the guy had has had problems for a while. So yeah. I think if it was that big of a deal, I don't think WWE would have even tried to touch it. No, one hundred percent. And and the thing is, Ty, that's that's the story. That's this is what they've been leading up to. I'm not I'm not saying um, the the police custody thing. This is just a part of the story. But I'm saying leading up to they had all those uh, the four part series for a month. We see uh, Jeff Hardy Redemption stories from the fall to the to the back to the fall again. Now he's 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 good again. Um. So th this is the story. Uh. You know, it, it, they if they didn't want to do this, they shouldn't have done any of that. I guess maybe what I'm saying. Um. To break away, uh, just to, to, to hit on a point here, um, break away from kayfabe for a sec from the storylines. A uh, little bit about myself. Uh, I uh, had some history. I have some history um, with some dry, uh, for some drinking and driving. For those that know me, uh, that knows my record is not 
squeaky clean whatsoever. And um, it's my fault for doing it. You know, if there's certain things that happen and I'm not okay with it, well, you know what? I don't like how somebody drive. You know, Tyler, you've driven me to a train station from work on several occasions. Um, I can sit there and complain to you that you're going the wrong way or you're, I don't like the way you drive. You know, I can't say anything because that's my fault. I, I put myself in the situation. I have to own it. This is a part of me. I have to be responsible for the actions that I take. And that I think with Jeff Hardy doing all this stuff and being asked to do, and I'm sure, yeah, they asked him, and I'm sure he's not going to say no. Like, I don't think he can say no because then why do we bring you back? You know, you can't tell us. No, you can't come back. We're giving you all these chances. You can't tell us no if you want to do something. But it's almost like this Jeff Hardy's owning this. He's owning his life. It's a part of who he is now. And that's what I have to learn. That's what I, I, I'm still learning, Ty. What I did is a part of who I am now. Now, have I learned from it? Yes. Has Jeff learned from it? Yes. Do I have a strong family support? Do I have a strong foundation? Yes. I have. My family didn't give up on me. My beautiful bride to be didn't give up on me. Jeff's in the same situation. His wife is still around. He's got a brother and a sister in law who obviously love him and don't want to see him going through all this. It's it's just who he is, and he's owning it. And to tell you the truth, you know, my respect for Jeff Hardy was here as it was. It just went up to here, um, with me, with him. I mean, is he he's taking ownership of who he is. So with that said, going back to K Fabe, all right, going back to the story that they're playing out for us on SmackDown. He was released. He wasn't drunk. This was a setup. Um, the real story here is Elias. Elias was the one that was injured. I, nobody's talking about Elias in this. Uh, the report I've seen from WWE.com, he has broken ribs and a torn pectoral muscle from this accident that he was involved in. Um, this is a scumbag move, and there's only one scumbag on SmackDown I can see being responsible for this, and it, it's Baron Corbin. Yeah, that's the only uh, logical choice, unless uh, you know, unless you really want to dig deep into it, and they uh, they throw the hacker mystery hacker behind all this. I think the hacker is going to reveal that it was Baron Corbin. How about that? I mean, I think I think you can tie right in there. We now we haven't seen the mystery hacker yeah. in two weeks. Um, I don't know what Eva Marie's doing if she's taking two weeks. <laughs> oh, that's right, Ty, you were in here last week. I, my call is Eva Marie now for the mystery hacker. I don't know what oh. Eva Marie is doing. <laughs> I you know I did see some some rumblings that she might pop her head back in the door, but so I don't think I don't think but, she'd be a mystery hacker. No, yeah, I think I think Jeff doesn't know who it was. I think he made a beeline for Sheamus because that's who he thinks it is. I think that's what where the ending from SmackDown came from, uh, where you know he caused uh, he he came out and distracted Sheamus so Daniel Bryan can get to the win, and uh, we'll get for that in a second, but. Uh, I, Elias was the one that was injured, and this is just a, a scumbag move that I, I think was, you know, originally, I guess maybe just this is going to give Baron Corbin a ton of heat, that Baron Corbin set up Jeff Hardy, and then we'll eventually get Baron Corbin versus Jeff Hardy, which I think will be great. But I think WWE's taking the heat on this one from doing the story. I think this is kind of backfiring on them. Uh, you know, uh, it's kind of like, you know, rightfully so. In a way, like the casual fans, not going to understand what's going on, um, but the people like you or I who sit on a computer once a week for about ninety minutes talking about wrestling, who who can pick apart stories and like manipulate it, understand that at the end of the day, when all is said and done, it's going to end up being like a, a repeat underdog story, whether it's. A world title or whether it's the, the intercontinental title it's going to be like the guy was sol couldn't get anything going for him yeah when he comes back guns blazing on a mission to right his wrongs and get his life back on track with the title yeah the best the best story is tied the hero has to fall before he gets back up and accomplishes what he set out to do now if, if jeff hardy comes out universal champion and all this i think that would be that would be incredible that's yeah. that's an incredible end of the end of this story and that's an incredible end of his career uh, if he has one last universal title run. That'd be, oh, that'd yeah. be crazy. But do you see a universal title, at least for the next, I would say within the le at least the next 12 months, uh, obviously in wrestling, you don't say never say never, but with um, Baron Corbin kind of being forced into the picture, again, he's a heel. It's kind of supposed to seem like he's forced. 
Yeah. Uh, Otis now having his run with money in the bank, Braun Strowman being on fire right now. Depending on how long Jeff Hardy is going to keep going for, do you actually do you see him realistically getting a world title run? If it is, if it is, maybe it's not a long one. I mean, you can give it to him for three months and, and be okay. Like I, I'm okay with that. I don't think I don't, I don't think anyone's going to complain with that. You know, I guess no. it's the issue. You know, whatever's going on with Universal Title and who's in line. And said, you know, you got Miz and Morrison coming up next with them. You got Bray Wyatt, you know, lurking somewhere. Um, and he, he's, I said, I, I, I said last week and I'll say it again, he'll probably pop up next Sunday night post-match. Uh, you know, Roman Reigns, I, I don't know how long they'll delay his, uh, you know, I, I guess potential championship run when he comes back. Uh, but you know, that's going to be lurking, uh, possibly with a rumble win and the WrestleMania win. Cause that's, you know, just what Roman Reigns does. But, yeah. uh, so I, I honestly just, the last thing with Jeff Hardy, I want to say the, the only the only reason why people should have a problem with this storyline is that it's been done before. That is honestly the only complaint you can have. It's been done before. Chris CM Punk has got on Jeff Hardy about this. Uh, Chris Jericho got on CM Punk about this. I remember yeah, uh, Jericho was on CM Punk about his family just being a bunch of drunks. And, you know, it's, this is not below WWE to do this. And Jeff Hardy's not going to say no because he's been given chance after chance. And like I said, on the overall grand scale, uh, my respect level for Jeff Hardy went up tenfold because of this whole thing. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I can, they, you cannot, uh, you can't argue the the fact there that you know for him to on screen in front of however many people watch millions, hundred thousands, whatever, and own what he's doing is in any situation it takes a man or woman yeah. to own their flaws and mistakes. Yep. And that's what Jeff's doing right in front of our very eyes. Yeah. Aaron Corbin is going to get a ton of heat. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is a heat gold mine for Barry. Yeah, like I said, I hope it doesn't backfire. I hope Corbin gets some of it and not just Vince and whoever the, uh, the writers that be. But I guess maybe the, the guy that wrote this story got fired. Somebody just got fired, I think. But that's how uh, The writer going. released almost right after SmackDown, yeah? Yeah. So I just broke my pen cap. Anyway, um... So we start SmackDown. Okay, after that, then we got uh, since Elias and Jeff Hardy. <laughs> you got you got to get you got to give me a sec to get used to these, these banners popping up out of nowhere. Yeah, no, look, hey, we're moving. Hey, five five weeks ago, we sat here and said that next week we were going to have a logo and everything was going to look better. We got way more than a logo four weeks later. That's it. I mean, I got my WrestleMania, I got my Triple H plaques up. I got Alf with me. I got Ted with me. I got my Randy Orton now, and I got my glare gone uh, for my outdoor. You can see my Randy Orton signed sweat uh, sweatshirt. I got a ceiling fan. You got a I ceiling got, fan. See that? I, see, I like that though because that's a shout out to the uh, the performance center that has that big ass fan on the top of the the uh, the entrance way. And you know and I'm calling it a big ass fan is because that's what it's actually called. It's called the big ass fan. They had that at the Prudential Center when I used to work there. They had a whole bunch of them. That's the actual name of it. It's a big ass fan. They have yeah, one. I'm big ass ass fan. I hope they bring a fan with them to, to, to events now and just hanging above the entrance way. That'd be so, great. Uh, going, so now Baron Corbin, uh, and I'm not Baron Corbin, uh, Jeff Hardy and Elias were supposed to pe compete in the Intercontinental Championship Tournament. <clears throat> they were out. The, they had a meeting with this guy in a purple suit. Um, I believe that was his official name on social media. Because nobody had, had any idea who this guy was, but apparently he's some sort of authority figure uh, on SmackDown or WWE or whatever his role is. And they did announce his name, and I can't remember what it was. But I like the guy in the purple suit, so I'm going to stick with that. There you go. Um, AJ Styles decided to uh, just take the bye. He had the choice. Him and Daniel Bryan had choices. Styles decided to take the bye into the finals. Bryan decided to fight. And they came out with the Battle Royal, 10-man Battle Royal. Uh, to determine Daniel Bryan's opponent, did you? Uh, I guess I know you. Uh, you might have missed SmackDown. Did you happen to catch or read up on the Battle Royal? Sorry, I read up on the Battle Royal. Uh, I know Shorty G put on a hell of a show. Yes, we found Chad Cable. Yes, if anybody was looking for Chad Cable, we found him. I can't He's call okay. him. Okay, no, that's his name now. I just can't do it. That's, it's, it's almost like a too much respect to call him Shorty G. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, but no, uh, I did read that. Uh, 
for the battle royal. Sheamus is the one who ended up coming out victorious. There you go. And he last eliminated Jey Uso. And I think that's something that I want to just address real quick. Can we possibly see Jey Uso go on a little bit of a run here by himself while Jimmy's uh, recovering from injury? I think that would actually be a very smart move. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things where battle royals, uh, you know, famously in the Royal Rumble, for example, the final four are like the most important four guys as far as you could. It's almost seems every year you can tell who the obvious winner is. You can see that generally kind of but there's this kind of like the guy who's the uh well let, let's be fair for a second the last time that they had a royal rumble where the winner wasn't obvious was when nakamura won at least in my opinion because i thought that was roman reigns all the way oh uh, i thought that was a dead ringer for nakamura and i thought that, that had nakamura written all over it not me maybe i missed something but it's all Randy, Randy Orton was out of left field the last time he won. That was I'm still upset about that one, but that's the garbage. Um, but B Battle Royal, Royal Rumbles, famously, the final four guys or final two, two in the 10 man Battle Royal are usually the two guys that like the company's getting behind, kind yeah. of. Oh, you yeah. Know, for example, Baron Corbin, his first ever main roster match at the time when they were when they were not considered equal rosters. He, he wins the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Yep. First you NXT know. superstar to win a match at WrestleMania. That's a trivia question for you. You know, and you, Corbin. Yeah, and you think last year, this past Royal Rumble, you have Edge and Randy Orton set up there probably at this point year-long feud. Yep. Roman Reigns, who they're always going to constantly push down your throat. And Drew McIntyre, who was the guy who was going to take over for Brock Lesnar with or without a Royal Rumble, honestly. I think I actually, if you go to prowrestlingpickem.com, Ty, I'm a stats nut. I, I've mentioned that on several occasions. Um, that is a statistic that I do keep. That is in the resource section of prowrestlingpickem.com. Uh, if you go to Royal Rumble stats, I actually have uh, final fours, uh, most final, you know, final most final fours in uh, history. Do you know who's number one? Most final fours in history. In Rumble history. I want to say it's a tie because I want to say Roman Reigns just tied him. And Roman Reigns is up to like like what five? Six is the answer. I know that. I think Roman. I think Roman might be at five. So okay. Give you a hint. He never won a rumble. Okay, that rules out Triple H because I I thought I saw that one coming. Nope. Um. All right, you got three seconds. Time. I got to keep the show rolling. Never won a rumble. I don't know. Kane. Really? Is that that final fours? Five final fours is Kane, and then he had that one. He, he had a tie for fourth as the fake Diesel in 97. Him and uh, The Undertaker went out at the same time and finished fourth. Oh. Anyway. So, yeah. So, yeah, Jey Uso, there's, there's a chance there. There's a chance yeah, there. You know, that's one of those things where it's, again, um, these guys, you know, Famously, the last couple of guys in the Royal Rumble are the guys the companies are getting behind. Yep. So what does that mean for the Usos as a tag team? You know, that, that's kind of – it raises eyebrows. I don't think I don't see anything in the near future. But it's almost like they definitely planted that seed to get you thinking. Yeah, and actually I was kind of hoping that he did win it because even just for one night, if it's just for one night, he's a singles wrestler in the finals and the semifinals of the Intercontinental Championship Tournament against Daniel Bryan. That that would have been a hell of a match. That would have been that would have been great. But you know, as the story goes, you know, like I said, Jeff Hardy came out, uh, and that story progressed because he's blaming Sheamus for what happened. Blaming Sheamus. That kind of rhymed a little bit. I like that. Blaming, blaming Sheamus. Um. So yeah. So now we uh, that sets up Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles in not this Friday, but the next Friday before Backlash. Um. Kind of thought that. This match would be at Backlash. I uh, don't know what they're thinking. Maybe a no contest here, then replay it again at Backlash. I don't know why they're doing it this way. This You can't get any bigger than these two um, unless, you know, as we discussed last week, it'll just completely show up Randy Orton and Edge, and that's being billed as the greatest wrestling match of all time. You, you know, it's one of those things, and I've, de I've definitely said my piece on this before. I'm pretty sure I had something to say after Money in the Bank. Um they're in a situation where they have all this TV time or um, network time, however you want to call it, 
to do as long of a pre-show as they want. And, and, you know, famously, uh, when Vince McMahon was the first guest on the Stone Cold podcast on the network, the first run, um, when the show was ending, he looked over at the producer and goes, and I quote, this is my damn network. We'll go as long as I want. <laughs> I missed that. I didn't see that. That's awesome. He only ended up going for like an extra fifteen minutes, but yeah, like you, you, you acknowledge already that you know you have the time. Why are you not including your? This is my network. <laughs> this is damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's uh, yeah, it's one of those things where. Why are the uh, I'm going to throw up air quotes a million times, but mid card titles not being appreciated on these pay per views, yeah. especially when you have more time now than ever. You know what I, I mean? Know. So I we, should, uh, we should go to we should go to the headquarters and sit in on a meeting and ask. Yeah, you know what? We really should. Look, <laughs> I have a podcast. I need content. I need to know why this title is not on the paper. <laughs> Email. We'll have the we'll have the Eastern Observer email Vince McMahon see if he wants to come on our show. And, yeah, uh, <laughs> we'll see if uh, he'll answer that question for us. How come the mid cards? Well, might the- try to trick us into buying some stock in the XFL, but <laughs> uh, Matt Riddle hopping ship. Matt Riddle is going to SmackDown. There it is. Yeah. It's official. Matt Riddle to SmackDown. Uh, they yeah. just ran a promo for him. Uh, there's really nothing to report other than that. It actually happened. Uh, who would you like to see? You say, do you, I don't know if you know the SmackDown roster times. I mean, so we saw 10 guys in the Battle Royal and everyone we, uh, we've been discussing. Who do you want to see fa- uh, fight Matt Riddle first? Well, not even first, but just in general. You know, see, I, I, I kind of thought of something, and I, it's going gonna, it's gonna to sound weird, and I know it's going to sound weird because I just came up with it because of the conversation we had. But the fact that the IC title match is not on the pay-per-view. You're thinking that there's a possibility this could end in a no contest. That's could that. it be because Matt Riddle interferes and takes them both out? Are you going to jump in and Matt Riddle? And yeah. is, that, is that a heel jump? Like, what are we doing here? Like, that sounds like a heel move. Are we going to make Matt Riddle yeah. heel like, right off the bat? Yeah. Bro. I mean, you know, why Bro. not? Bro. Bro. That's uh, not very Italian, bro. No, That's it's not, not an Italian move. I mean, I, Italian move if Matt Riddle does that, bro. You know, it's they look just spitballing ideas, maybe. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, going back to what you were saying before, really quick on um, why this the match isn't on the uh, isn't going to be on the backlash show. It's right here. It's going to outshine the best match ever there for one of our followers on YouTube. There you go. There you go, and, and I, I'll be honest with you, it's hard. It's kind of hard to disagree. Um, <laughs> um, I haven't seen rerun in a long time. It's good to see rerun on the screen. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, I, you know, it's interesting to see how they could do Matt Riddle because it almost seems like you're not going to throw him with Braun Strowman right away. That's ridiculous. You no, could, if, they, if, if they don't do anything with Baron Corbin and Jeff Hardy, Baron Corbin and Riddle would be good. So if this thing with Otis and Miz and Morrison, hey, hey, ho, ho, keeps going, do you think that one, you know, maybe this week or the week after, you could see, um, you could see Otis asking Matt Riddle to team up? It's possible. And maybe he just worked with them for a little bit. I could see Riddle going against Cesaro and Nakamura right now. I could see that'd that. Be good, that'd be good little matches. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot we can discuss going further. There's Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle is officially on SmackDown. I like it. It's just new matches. It. Uh, and like I mentioned last week, SmackDown's roster is it's hurting right now. There are a lot of injuries. A lot of guys at home washing their tights. Um, you know. So we found we found one of the Usos. We found Chad Gable. That was important. That was good to see them on Friday. Um. Uh, I guess one last thing was we'll save. I know I know Sasha Banks beat Alexa Bliss. Um, they have a tag title uh, match coming up Friday. Uh, we'll get to that before we uh, make the picks for uh, for NXT and get into In Your House. Um, and we'll probably get into a little bit more uh, when we discuss Raw. So we'll just table that for now. Uh, Lacey Evans and Sony Deville put on a little bit of an amateur wrestling uh, display. Yeah, I heard that was uh, you know. Lacey went down in the amateur force position, and they had a little bit of a 
a little bit of a nice little exchange. Uh, I wouldn't say similar to uh, Angle and Benoit from WrestleMania 17. I know that was uh, that was probably as close as to the greatest amateur wrestling you've ever seen in professional wrestling. But that was, you know, Sonya. Sonya held her own. That's what Jersey girls do. You know what I'm saying, Ty? That's why Jersey girls do that. <laughs> so that ended in a double count out. Uh, probably be more with that to come. So, uh, title, you want to switch? Uh, title, you want to switch it up? Where are we going next? Yeah. Let's uh, let's yeah, shoot over. Let's see what the magic, magic uh, nameplate says. Let's uh, let's see. Um, I think the nameplate is telling me to call out the call out from Chris Jericho to Mike Tyson and why it's actually you ridiculous. You know, it's uh, Mike Tyson. You know, it's one of those things where, you know, a lot of people say, oh, WWE's done this before. Oh, oh they're stealing that from me. WWE literally did this with the same person like 20 years ago. Yeah, well, Mike Tyson. Yeah, that's... yeah with the same person. It's yeah, Tyson was. Uh, I think he was playing more of a hero character because Austin was our hero. Uh, it's a little bit of a flip flop. Um, I didn't realize that Mike Tyson was a guest general manager on Raw all those years ago and knocked out Chris Jericho. I was not aware of that. I wasn't. I guess I wasn't watching at that point, or I forget what I was doing in 2010. Um. I didn't know that happened. I guess I, I did look up the story. Uh, Tyson, uh, I guess it was Chris Jericho and Mike Tyson versus uh, DX. I'm not exactly sure if it was for the World Tag Team Championship, but DX was uh, the tag champs at that point in time. Uh, Tyson knocks out Jericho, and we had another DX-Mike Tyson reunion, uh, however many years later. So uh, that's where that all stemmed from, and that's why Jericho was going back after him, I guess, a, a year, a few, ten years, and Jericho still hasn't forgotten. I just don't know what they're going to do with it, Ty. I guess maybe that's my – where do they go? Ty, Tyson's not wrestling. It's, he's not no. Tyson Fury, and he's not – Especially know, Vasquez, and he's not, like – Well, especially if Mike Tyson's, like, legitimately come, getting ready to fight a couple times in the next couple of years, there's no chance he's stepping in a wrestling ring. Yeah, to, I, to I, I don't want to say you can't trust him, but like he's not trained for that. I'm not saying not trust him that he'd go off, you know, off script or whatever you want to call it. I just you can actually hurt somebody. You know, Mike Tyson's. Yeah. I ain't say, like I said last week. I'm not standing in front of that punch. <laughs> yeah, if I if I'm walking down the street and I'm being followed by a group of people behind me. And in front of me is Mike Tyson, and I got to pick a direction. I'm walking towards the group of people. My odds are better. Yeah. You know, Mike Tyson he, ruined, he ruined a perfectly good pep rally. I mean, that, that was the unfortunate thing. There was a lot of a lot of love in that ring from the inner circle. A lot of gifts being exchanged. Um. I, I, again, just Sammy Guevara is just had. He's had a rough streak lately. The guy in that little scooter, the little leg scooter. I thought that was very nice. So. Um, um, AW in a, in a nutshell last week. What are we looking at? We're looking at hashtag FTR tie. That's kind of the, the biggest thing other than uh, not named Mike Tyson that came out of this. Um, the uh, Formerly known as The Revival, uh, their names are now Dax Hardwood and Cash Wheeler. Uh, hashtag FTR uh, made their appearance after the Young Bucks and the Private Party um, had their match that the Bucks won. And then... Uh, Blade and Butcher got involved. It was just, it, it, it was pretty cool. It was good to see. It was good to see. Uh, I got, I got, I can't remember the names. Dax and Cash. Got to remember that. Dax and Cash. Good to see them back on TV. Um, I think they're going to be happier in AEW. I know they weren't happy in WWE. Um, with their arrival though, and the one thing that AEW has kind of been holding their hat on i guess is that an, i don't even what's the expression on that i don't even know what's the expression Hold their, holding their head up on holding their hat on i don't know their tag division their tag division is top notch it's, it's the best in the world um and the ftr just joined that so here's the list of the teams that are currently in in AEW. you got kenny omega and adam page and i know we're going to get into that because they have a tag title match tonight um i kind of see them dropping the belt but we'll get into that um, best friends, young bucks, SCU, private party, Jurassic Express as your face tag teams. 
Then you got Sabian and Havoc. I, think, I guess they're going to be a tag team now. Like I said, I have them winning the belts tonight. We'll get into that. Pride and Powerful, Dark Order, Lucha Bros, FTR, Blade and Butcher, and the Hybrid 2. That's with Kenny Omega and Adam Page for now. That's 13 tag teams. And those, those 13 tag teams, are none of them are slouches. No, their tag team division is A+. Plus. They, have, they have yet to put on a lazy tag match in my eyes. No, and this is there's that that it's incredible. Like that that tag division, we're excited to see. So uh, I'm excited to see it. And like I said, the tag team championships. We'll just we can probably just get into that now if you if you want. I know we'll do the picks a little bit, but they uh, uh, Kenny Omega and Adam Page. This is gonna be their first title defense, and God knows how long. Adam Page, I guess uh, he was home washing his tights for a while, uh, and then he came back for Stadium Stampede. Um. Where do where you see this going? I, I, I see the title changing, and I see Adam Page with some kind of a turn here. Yeah, I think, they, I think uh, they're due for a drop. Um, it's, you know, they've had a nice run. Um, definitely a nicer run than I expected, to be quite honest. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, Omega's one of those guys where I don't see him turning anytime soon. Page. No, you know, Kenny Omega is not going to turn. Adam Page would be the, the one that was certain. God, if, if Kenny Omega did a heel turn, people would lose. <sighs> how many? How many stars could you equip? Twenty? That, that's like a twenty-nine star heel turn. If he if he does that, that'd be incredible. Yeah, and it's, I, I don't see it happening soon. No, Page just has problems, and I guess they. I don't know if he just sucked it up one last time for Stadium Stampede, but. Uh, you know, I just get the feeling, you know, like I said, with the tag division where they're at, just, those two don't need to be in it. Kenny, mm -hmm. Kenny Omega needs to be uh, on a singles run. Um, I don't know. That's that's just me. Kip, no, I don't know where Kip Sabian and Jimmy Havoc came from either. That's that's kind of – I don't want to say a random tag team. I know they're friends and everything recently, but that's you – know, of all the teams that, you know, Paige and Omega could drop the titles to, if that's the case, like I said, I don't know if they're the answer either. I guess we'll find out tonight. That's it. That's it. You know, and the show, like I said, we have uh, – it's 6.30 now. There's an hour and a half before the Wednesday night wars continue tonight between NXT and AEW. We will be done with more than enough time for you guys uh, to turn off your computers, uh, maybe go have a little snack, get everything situated for uh, tonight's festivities on NXT and AEW. Then uh, – Cody Rhodes also announced that uh, he will be defending the TNT Championship on a weekly basis. Yeah. Uh, very similar. First thing, you know, John Cena came to mind. I think uh, probably I'm not the only one that that uh, thought came across. Um, it's not. I don't know if it's going to be an open challenge or if he's going to have set challengers. I really didn't go into detail. He just wants to defend the TV champion, you know, the title named after the network they're on. Uh, he wants to defend it on a weekly basis. And Jungle Boy gets the first crack at it. And Tyler, I know you weren't here last week. I just want to play you something real quick from last week's episode. Um, sometimes I don't know how good I am. And then I say stuff like this. To, I guess tomorrow night. We'll do tomorrow night first, right? That would make sense because it's, you know, you know, Wednesday comes first alphabetically, so we'll do tomorrow night first. Sure. Uh, like I said, AEW really didn't have anything other than the Battle Royal. Um, announced. He didn't announce any participants. Uh, we briefly discussed Lance Archer running through everybody if he's in it. Uh, I can't really think of anything uh, anybody else right now that would make any sense uh, unless they just go in a completely different direction and have, say, Jungle Boy won it. Oh! Wow! wow. I have a present for you. You ready? I'm gonna make it even. I'm gonna make it even better, and it's gonna be official for you. There you go. Unintentionally picking the guy who wins an anonymous battle royal. That was Yeah. Which leads us into tonight's match. There you go. There you go. You're gonna give Jungle Boy a shot. Um No. I don't think so either, but I think this is gonna be a hell of a match. I mean Jungle Boy, I mean I, I knew he was good, but he just impressed the hell out of me against NJF at uh, double or nothing. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, you know, the thing, the only reason I would count Jungle Boy out now as opposed to counting him out in two months from now, uh, it's barely been 10 days since Cody Rhodes won his title. Uh, maybe about two weeks now, give or take. What's, what's that? 
since he um, became the TNT champion. Oh, yeah, yeah, 10 days. No, it was a week and a half. It was last week. Yeah, so it's been 10 days. You know, it's – you can do so many matches with so many people before you have to drop the title. So to announce an invitational and then drop it right away, it just doesn't make that much sense. No, it doesn't. He's going to hold it for a long time. And I don't, I'm not in I'm not, a no, long time. I'm not talking about a year. Um a month. It's – I, no, I don't think he's going to hold it for this one for a year. It, it, it's going to, it's he's going to go with it until they want to give it to Lance Archer. Like I said, I know we discussed this last week, Ty, and you weren't here. I know you listened. Um, they they got to rebuild Lance Archer, and he's got to be Lance Archer's got to be the one to take it from Cody. That, and that's just yeah. my opinion on it. I, I think that uh, in the meantime, if you throw Cody out there, uh, and he'll he'll throw out good match after good match after good match. Um. You know, we'll start with Jungle Boy, and it'll escalate from there. So, yeah. I, I, I it, it, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward, and I haven't said. I don't think I've said that in a long time. I'm looking forward to see Cody every week. <laughs> I was yeah. never the big. I wasn't the biggest Cody Rhodes fan back in WWF, and I'm actually enjoying this. Was his Ring of Honor and, and New Japan Bullet Club stuff. Now it's. This is going to be fun. Yeah, no, this should definitely be a good match. Um, obviously, Jungle Boy has failed to disappoint in the last few weeks. Um, Cody's kind of failed to disappoint since AEW started. So yeah, I this is gonna be this will probably be the highlight match of the night, unless, unless again they pull some kind of sick swerve in this tag team match. Yeah, yep. You know, secondary. Well, I wouldn't say secondary, but also tonight you're gonna have Chris Jericho versus Cole Cabana. We we'll running with that as part of their programming, and then you'll have Nyla Rose versus Big Swole. That's going to be interesting. I like that That's match. An interesting match. That'll be a very interesting match. Um, to go back to that battle royal, and he threw up Cole Cabana. Cole Cabana in that battle royal um, after he was eliminated uh, seemed very down, seemed very upset with himself, and was seemed like he was picked back up by the Dark Order. Uh, a couple members, I don't remember who was out there to, to help him. but uh, So I kind of maybe see something with that tonight. I think Jericho is going to whoop him. Um, he's going to feel dejected again, and the Dark Order is going to come come and maybe try to recruit him. So I kind of feel like there's going to be a Cole Cabana in the Dark Order uh, thing coming very uh, shortly. Um, and also on the Battle Royal, MJF and Wardlow, uh, they had a little bit of an issue. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, how if MJF can calm him down. Um, you know, how the, the young, uh, smart Alec uh, wrestler who has the big bodyguard, the big bodyguard tends to turn on him 10 times out of 10 at some point. Oh yeah, um, a Shawn Michaels and Diesel, Shawn Michaels and Sid, Christian uh, Tyson Tomko, Christian and Tyson Tomko, <laughs> Christian. I love that. That was WrestleMania. That was that was around WrestleMania 21. It was him, yeah. Trish Stratus, and Tyson Tomko. Dude, that was so awesome. Yep, Tomko was at the ring for the first ever uh, ladder Money in the Bank. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. So, so. Uh, yeah, we'll round it up. You know, one one last thing with AEW. Uh, good news: Brick Baker doesn't seem like she's injured all that much. Um, came out with a presentation. Apparently, rule number three of being a role model is that you do not hurt the role model. I uh, kind of figured that maybe that would have went without saying, uh, but apparently, Britt Baker had to make this abundantly clear that you're not supposed to hurt the role model. So she's going to come back. She said she would be back for All Out, um, and there's going to be heck to pay from our lovely dentist friend. Oh yeah. So backtracking, uh, not backtracking, but looking back to this past Monday, Raw was fairly eventful. Not a ton, but not nothing. We saw our first ever uh, televised bowling match through uh, WWE. That was fun. Yeah. Again, Ivar's just picking up chicks everywhere he goes. Yeah. Unbelievable. He's cute, apparently. He apparently is. Apparently is. You know, we saw we saw a title change. We see we, uh, we see WWE starting to uh, give Dominic a little bit of uh, a little bit of momentum. Maybe starting his career soon. Yeah, let's 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 let's, let's pause right there on um, El Hijo de Mysterio. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, what? How far along is he in his training that they're gonna? Do something. Is, is he going to have a match with? Like, are they going to put him in a match here? Ty? Where, where do you think they're going with uh, Dominic Mysterio here? So, 
one of the first things that kind of screams out to me in my head is immediately handicap match. Okay. With Rey Mysterio and Dominic, with Seth Rollins, Murphy, and now Austin Theory. All right. You don't think that way going to be in there? Well, you know, think of it in a way of the kid is protected. He's with four very experienced people, his father by far being the most experienced of the group. He won't have to do a ton, but he definitely gets a taste of live action. Um, so I see them maybe building him in slowly but surely. Um, I know we don't believe in rumors here. Spoilers. No, no, no. But you don't even see anything like photo leaks or anything about his training. So no, that, that's why I'm that's why I'm asking. Like, wh- how far along is he? Do you think that's I mean, the real he's question? Been around for a while, he's been signed. The, you know, the real question is, has he even been training? My thing is, he's I, he had to have absolute, absolutely have been training, um, more or less, because I don't think you're going to let a guy like uh, I don't know. I'll use an example: Brock Lesnar fling yeah. a child. Is yeah, I mean that's, that's, why, that's is that the only in ring stuff that we've seen out of Dom Mysterio? Is is him being F five by Brock Lesnar? Well, the last time I checked, he was carried up a ladder in about two thousand and five. There was a big custody debate for him. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll get to that. Don't worry. No, but I'm talking about the last time he was in the ring <laughs> with uh, recently. Is that that whole thing with Cain Velasquez and Ray? And I think I think Dom got F five. He did. And I think that was the only ring action we have kind of seen out of him. I don't remember. Well, he was anybody, anyone wants to chime in in the comments, uh, we can see him. Uh, if we're missing something with LEO Dave Mysterio, uh, please, please chime in. He was F5, and if I'm not mistaken, he was also f- launched into the barricade. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, that sounds like something Lesnar would do. So, well, yeah, I mean, he's freaking Brock Lesnar, but <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah. Do, they throw kids in the barricades. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I would. It would be stupid to think he's not training, but the fact that it's so hush hush, you know, we're seeing in all these documentaries now, like the Edge Twenty Four, um, the Undertaker Last Ride series, that WWE seems to be like Oprah Winfrey when it comes to giving people rings. You think maybe they sent Ray? Well, Edge was sent a ring to go build in an old warehouse. Oh, okay. That took me a second of what you were talking about. Yeah. Do you think maybe maybe Ray Mysterio was sent a ring so he could train Dominic? That's possible, but I think they're all they've all been in Florida now too. Like that's not like I I don't know. Maybe that maybe I mean he's he's probably I would say Dominic's probably been at the PC when he wasn't traveling. I would you know, have back when back when there was live crowds and they were doing live events. I, I doubt that Don Mysterio was uh, was traveling with him. He was probably in, in the performance center training, and then only go in the wall when when need be. So, uh, my question, I, I, I you, you mentioned the ladder match, and back it was a two thousand five. I know it was SummerSlam, and I, I know this. I just can't remember what year. Was it two thousand five? I guess it was two thousand five. I'll trust you on that one. 2005, the ladder match at SummerSlam for the custody of Dominic. Yeah, so I would love at some point, you know, I, I, I would love to see Ray and Dominic, you know, tag with each other, but at, at some, I just want that heel turn, and I just want Dominic just laying over a pro, uh, prone uh, Ray Mysterio. My last name is Guerrero. And just drop the mic and walk away. And from then on, he's known as Dominic Guerrero. And I just think that would be the most amazing thing they could possibly do with this kid when he's ready. Yeah, that would be a pr- that would be a pretty sick way to be like, all right, I'm ready. You've been pretty cool. I'm just gonna kind of kick you kick you down this flight of stairs, and I'll see you later. Oh, and I'm a Guerrero, by the way. <laughs> yeah, oh, my name is Dominic Guerrero. Uh, it's very. It's going to be very interesting to see how they play out the, the Dominic thing. You know, especially I think now is definitely a good time to, to do it. I mean, I think one. You know, one of the first things you ever. You know, you've seen documentaries and interviews that people all oh, their first WrestleMania they walk out and they immediately get the jitters. 
Yeah. Uh, with no crowds right now, maybe accustoming him to getting used to some, I guess, in-ring stuff without a crowd. Not yeah, and then it'll be second nature. With, I know exactly what you're saying. Yep. You know what I mean? So it's like it's yeah. kind of, it's kind of like, all right, yeah, now there's just people. Whatever. Um, moving on to, I guess, what might be considered a sensitive subject for you. I don't know if you have any bad blood here, but um, our truth has become now a, I don't know, 50-time, 24-7 champion. Oh, yeah, I don't I, I think he I think he finally beat Ravens record. I was keeping track of it at the beginning and I just, I just lost count. Ravens hardcore title record. I think Ra- I think Raven at 26. He was a 26 time yeah. hardcore championship. I think Truth finally beat him. Yeah. Now in your book, yeah. Is our Truth beating Rod Gronkowski not even beating him for a title. He eventually beats him into a release of his contract so he can go pursue a career in football. Yeah, I, I guess Gronk, uh, he wants to be a football player now, huh? I, I Look, more power to him. I hope he has a great career. <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. No, no, he, 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 oh, there you go. He's uh, – I was going to have a foot prop. I had to move Alf. Um, yeah, I guess Gronk, it's, he, Gronk went back. We, we, we knew this was coming. Like I said, they signed with the Buccaneers. He was traded to the Buccaneers. Alf doesn't want to stay up now. Um, there we go. We just move it. A little bit. All right, he's back in shot. Um, I, whatever. He's back with Brady. I got. We got a couple draft picks for him. That's that's perfect. It said we. I'm a Patriots fan. We got a couple draft picks for him. Uh, it was free money on our end. So, um, good luck to them. Like I said, my my big thing. If you just want to talk football for a quick second, my big thing. Um, and I know uh, once the season starts, this is this will be mentioned. But the Super Bowl this year is in Tampa Bay, where WrestleMania was supposed to be. Um, so Brady and Gronk have the chance to become the first ever team to play at their home stadium in the Super Bowl, and nothing would make me happier for Jared Stidham and the Patriots to come in and beat Tom Brady in his house in the Super Bowl. And I think <laughs> be a nice little, you know, thanks for you know for six rings, but now we have seven. So you have no bad blood with our truth for doing your man dirty. Not even remotely close. All you know, right. even if Gronk was still as a Patriot, no, this has just been this has been fun. It's truth is fun. I don't think anyone ever will have a bad thing to say about our truth. Um, he's, he he's just a lot of just a lot of fun. And Gronk was fun too. You know, he's, uh, maybe Gronk will be back. Who knows? I, I don't. So, Al, anything else from Raw really stick out to you? Yes. Yes, it did. A couple things, actually. Um, first off, Apollo Crews. How good did he look with the United States Championship? He that, looked, that belt looked so good around him. And I was just so happy for him. That's his first championship in five years. He didn't win anything in NXT. I know he was there for a short time. But now he's just been putting on clinics. Yeah. They, you know, oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy for Apollo Crews. I think he looks really good with that title. Yeah, you know, he's one of those superstars where, um, you know, I've referenced it a couple of times in the last few weeks where the guys get built up, built up, built up, and then they get knocked right back down. And this is that's a guy that this has happened to a few times now where he's been built up, where he was teaming with Ricochet, and then he had a nice little singles run before that, but nothing ever came out of it. And now that it's yeah. finally paid off and he has a championship and he's going to get a chance to put himself in the spotlight, yeah. you know, it's amazing that such a bad situation in the world in general is turning out is bringing out the best in most of these wrestlers right now. Yeah, and he's speaking better too. His promos have been a lot better too. His promos are uh, new. Really, so yeah, I'm really happy for Apollo Cruz. Um, he actually issued a challenge. He got to pick his first opponent. Um, ended up being Kevin Owens. Um, that was a lot of fun. That was actually a really good match before it got broken up. And you no, know, I was thinking about watching it while I was watching him. Like, okay, you got two good guys with each other. This is probably going to get broken up quickly. Um, by Angel Garza and Andrade, which eventually it was. I mean, this is going to be broken up quickly, turned into a tag match. And then it was just like, wow, they went for like two or three segments. Like, they went a while before Andrade and Angel came out, and it was awesome. I mean, yeah. I don't know if they're going to put those two back together again. Um, but holy crap, that was really good. Owens, Owens and Apollo Crews put on an amazing show. Um, and then the tag match was really good, too, where Apollo Crews got the win. So, um, yeah, like, and you know, extra Paul Cruz. Yeah, and uh, you know, again, one of our one of our viewers on YouTube, again, thank you for the support, saying the same thing we're saying. He's had potential for years, and it's he's a product of Paulie dangerously. <clears throat> Rightly so, shoves it. 
Paul, Paul E knows talent. Paul E knows talent. Look, if, if that if there's a guy that ever came near me and gave me any opinion on anything, and I look over and it's Paul Heyman, I'm gonna listen. Paul Heyman knows talent when he sees it. Uh, there were three women's matches. Um, we'll address them quickly because I know uh, we still have a whole pay per view to talk about. Oh yeah. Um, the Nia Jax Kyrie Sane Kyrie Sane match. Um. That looked like it was a little short, shorter than originally expected. That looked like it was a 10-minute match condensed into about four to six, if if that. Did you see the cut on her head, the, the gash that was on her? Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Hey, look. So, look, Kyrie's a warrior. She is a true pirate princess. She will be back. Look, Nia uh, Jack, but- I don't, I don't want to say I don't care who I offend, but it's the truth. Nia Jax is not a safe worker. This is not the first person she's hurt. No, it's a nice. She's going to continue to hurt people. Yeah. She does, you know, you, you, I kind of – I go back to the original Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire. Remember what Uncle Ben said? With great power comes great responsibility. And Nia Jax just hasn't learned how to control her power. You know, no, she doesn't. And that's what Uncle Ben said. Just because you can go around beating people up doesn't mean you should do it. You know, like that's – so, hopefully, like uh, up I, I like Nia Jax. What's that? She's beating up these wrestlers like they owe her money. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's just trying. She's trying to make it look real, and she just doesn't know her own strength. Maybe she does know, and she can't control it yet. I, I, I don't know. Obviously, it's not malicious. It's not intentional. You know, Nia Jax. No. What I've seen, um, and I'm sure she feels bad about all this. Um, she's an absolute sweetheart. It's. Ooh. You don't know. I don't know. I don't know the answer to this. I don't think Fire is the answer. I just think something's. I don't know. At what point, though, does somebody have to turn around and be like, you got to go to the PC for a little bit? You got to learn how to not actually kill someone. She was just there. She just came back from double knee surgery. I'm sure she was at the performance center at some point in time rehabbing in the past year. Yeah, but, but what I'm saying is, like, when do you go, like, do you not get the memo that you're not supposed to actually throw somebody into stairs? I mean, we we just had a segment, if I'm correct, two weeks ago, where okay. Seth Rollins shredded a man's eyeball. Clearly, yep. the man is okay. Yep. This was supposed to just be somebody getting thrown into the stairs, which we see all the time. And Mick Foley, the king of running into stairs, somehow always – Came out of those unscathed. Yep, you do backflip over them. A simple throw into the stairs, and this she. I don't even want to know how many stitches and staples she ended up with in her head. Yeah, you might have been the first person in history to actually come up with an example of being a safe wrestler and use Seth Rollins in the same sentence. So, probably yeah, you know that was figured it out. You I'm got one on everybody. I'm, I'm, this, that's gonna go viral. Somebody defended you, uh, Seth Rollins, for being safe. There you go, Tyler Hill. Yeah. Right here, watching podcast. Someone already came at me. Yep. Well, you know what? Rerun's having a day today. I know. I know. It says John. Let's just call. Let's just call John Rerun for now. You know. <laughs> yeah. Realistically, at the end of the day, look, Seth Rollins isn't the safest person in the world to work with. He he's got his history. He he blew out his own knee for. You for yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. It's it's been. When, when was the Sting match? Four years ago. I mean, that's um, he's been safe ever since. I mean, Sting was the last. Really? You know what? That let's just. Was that really all Seth? Yes. Was it unsafe? Probably. But, you know, come on. He's, this thing's 60 years old. Should he protect him more? Sure. But, like, it's – but now we're going four years, and Seth Rollins hasn't had any incidents. So I think we can just kind of close the book on Seth Rollins being injury prone. You know, I you don't have to forget. Yeah. Him. I know I haven't forgiven Goldberg for what he did to Bret Hart, but I think you can just kind of – you can't I – didn't, I don't forgive Goldberg for what he did to The Undertaker nine months ago. Yeah, no. He almost hurt him. He didn't end his career. Ugh. Yeah, um, his career. He almost ended his life. But anyway, yeah. moving on to some, you know, obviously we, a couple weeks ago, we, you know, we said we were going to try and cover this a little bit more. Al, you got some Impact Wrestling for us. I do. I do. Uh, because there was actually a commercial run um, promoting Slammiversary. That if you haven't seen it, it is it's pretty crazy. Um, they're promoting Slammiversary 
using old impact footage of Rockstar Spud, Ethan Carter the Third, Mike Bennett, and Maria Canellis. Um, Eric Young, I think I saw, and it threw a uh, Bulgarian flag in there. Um, and they said, you know, all these guys were released, and then all of a sudden, Slammiversary, July 18th, which, if uh, I read correctly, is three days after uh, the Future Endeavor list from WWE, three days after their 90-day no-compete clause is concluded. Now, this raises a curious question for me. Can they get in trouble at all for being included in a promo package? It's impact footage. Gotcha. And it, it, it's impact footage. All that, that was Rockstar Spud. That was Eric Young holding the TNA championship. And, and I said the only one they didn't have, I think the, the Gals and Anderson were in it too, but I think that was New Japan footage, which I'm sure they, they could use. Right. Um, uh, is it the, the Bulgarian flag was the only thing that, you know, they, they couldn't put anything Maru said, but like, are we, are we getting, what, would you like to see, I know you try to redo the New World Order and, you know, the Bullet Club and whatever. You, you want to see some kind of radical uh, group, like, come in here? Um, you can put, like, Heath Slater and Zach, maybe we've reformed somewhat of a next, you know, Heath Slater, Zach Ryder, uh, Kurt Hawkins, who now I guess is Brian Myers. Um, led by EC3, I, I don't know. Uh, like what, what can we do here? Like I would love to see EC3 come down, confront these guys, and then turn on everybody. And then they hit that money-making music from EC3 that I miss so much. Trouble, 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 trouble. Oh, uh, I can't sing. But yeah, dude, that trouble. Oh, I'm. But who knows? Like they, they can't sign. They like said they have three days to put this all together. I don't even know if it's, it's like stuff like with other sports where they're going to get in trouble for talking to them ahead of time. But uh, well, they have a lot of names out there. Um, honestly, I don't think Drake Maverick is going to be one of them. We'll address him in a little bit, but I don't, I don't think Rockstar Spud slash Drake Maverick is going anywhere. Uh, specifically not to slam reversary or, or impact. Yeah. That's per that commercial, but Holy crap. So um, I do want to pay attention. Uh, Slammiversary is one of their two big events. Uh, Slammiversary and Bound for Glory kind of uh, – they're, they're, they're big two over in Impact Land. Um, so it looks like they're setting up for a big show with that. Uh, with that, it's, it's kind of looked like Ken Shamrock and Michael Elgin are on a collision course uh, for Slammiversary. Uh, Michael Elgin a few weeks back uh, when I first reported um, that we were going to cover Impact – uh, he was injured. He was out for a little bit. He came out. He confronted uh, Michael Elgin. They got, they fought and uh, whatever. Rhino came out of nowhere, hit a gore. That's always fun to watch. If you want to see that, just look at that highlight. Uh, Rhino hit the gore on Raheem Rahe, Rahe, Raju. I'm going to stutter over that name every time I say it. Uh, Raheem Raju defeat Chase Stevens. Um, I haven't heard that name in a long time. Now, Chase, uh, Chase Stevens was a part of the Naturals. Uh, back in, uh, they were at the original Bound for Glory, which is one of my favorite shows of all time. And it was the Naturals versus America's Most Wanted. Uh, the Naturals were Andy Douglas and Chase Stevens, and they were managed by Shane Douglas, which was I thought was uh, really cool. Um, and then Austin Ace, and then they're number one. So when I told you two weeks ago, they're, 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 they're number one contenders tournament for the Impact Championship. They had the bracket. They had the eight. And last night they had the finals of that tournament. And nobody from the original eight competitors from the original brackets were in the finals of that tournament. It ended up being Austin Ace who came in after uh, – he filled in for Kent Shamrock um, after Michael Elgin jumped in, as I just said. Uh, so Austin Ace, uh, he ended up – he won it. He actually beat uh, Wentz from the Rascals who filled in for his tag partner, Trey. Trey from the Rascals was in the final. I guess he got jumped before the match. Now the interesting thing is that the Rascals – it's a three-man group. Uh, I don't know, uh, Dax, Dax, Wentz, and Trey. Um, Dax and Wentz actually had a number one contender's tag title match, which they won, so they're next in line to fight the North for the tag titles. But uh, Wentz pulled double duty, and actually had I saw highlights of the match. He actually he had a very good match against uh, Ace Austin, and uh, Ace Austin prevailed, and that's where uh, the show ended, that he gets the, the next shot. At allegedly, supposedly, Tessa Blanchard, um, but Moose – is the TNA champion not recognized by the company? But uh, Moose was making his uh, rounds saying that they should the winner of the tournament should challenge him and not Tessa Blanchard. 
And then uh, last two things, we have a knockouts championship match coming up next week uh, between Jordana, uh, Jordana Grace and Ty Valkyrie. Um, their women's division is really good. Uh, and Tyler, it just got better because I spy a Jersey girl on that roster now, Ty. Deanna Perrazzo signed with Impact last week that I didn't get a chance to announce. But Impact Wrestling, the women's roster, got a little bit much better. And I saw that uh, social media gave uh, AEW a little bit of heat for not taking Deanna Perrazzo. Um, obviously, the internet and social media, they recognize the talents of Jersey girls. Uh, they figured that uh, AEW could have used her, and they could have. But now she's uh, just, you know, she's a part of a stacked women's division on Impact. Yeah, <clears throat> no, I mean Impact. Um, even back and back when I watched um, regularly for, for years, um, Impact uh, women's division or knockouts division, however you'd like to refer to them, never lacked ever. They always had a yeah, st yeah. pretty steady women's division. So yeah, so that's, uh, like I said, if you guys, if you ha you haven't seen that Slammiversary commercial yet, it was pretty. Uh, it was, I say jaw dropping, man. It's only 22 seconds long. It's an actual commercial. It starts off with you know guys just watching TV, and a news report comes up, and uh, it was the future endeavors list. And wrestlers were just released because of the Pandora, coronavirus uh, virus pandemic. Whatever you'll see. But yeah, so that that's our uh, quick impact um, update. So Al, we're gonna move into the NXT portion, um, which is gonna recap a little bit of last week. Looking for looking into tonight's show, and then we're gonna finish the show obviously with our pickums. Yeah, I'm and gonna pull up this. I'm gonna pull this banner up before we say a word. Okay. Okay. Did I miss something? You did. This guy's <laughs> <pulled his gun. laughs> You, uh, Drake Mar Drake Maverick has thrown together a one two. A three-match win streak here to to win Group A of uh, this cruiserweight uh, pool-style tournament. Um, shout out to uh, John who has been coming up with the with the rerun icon. Shout out to John Smith last week uh, who picked Drake Maverick to win this match, uh, the triple threat match against uh, Kushida and Jake Atlas. Uh, it was kind of a controversial ending, and I kind of thought they were going to take it away from him, and they didn't. Uh, what happened was Kushida had Jake Atlas in uh, his his finisher. I don't remember the name of some some time escaped. I can't remember the name of his submission finisher. Um, but while he was in that finisher, because Jake Atlas on his back, Drake Maverick rolled his his arm over Jake Atlas. Referee counted three, but as the referee was counted three, Jake Atlas was also tapping out to Kushida. So it, it could have made. A little bit of a mess, but backstage afterwards, Kushida conceded. He's like, I want you to go for it. Uh, so he he's not going to protest uh, the referee's decision here. And he's going to uh, have Jake uh, Drake Maverick tonight uh, challenge and and go for the interim Cruiserweight Championship against, uh, oh, my God, El Eli, the, uh, the Iwa Phantasma. So that that was a that was a pretty cool thing, and in turn, if, if Maverick wins, uh, he's going to let Kushida have the first title match for his generosity. So it was a nice face moment, you know, good guy, good guy moment. Uh, everybody wins. Uh, we got Drake Maverick one more week, and uh, I think he's going to take it. I, I think we I can make that pick now. Um, I think he's I think he's going to win the, the cruiserweight championship. Yeah, you, you know, it's uh, when all the releases started. Um, he obviously well documented now that he came out with his uh, his tearjerker of the year award uh, video, um, where he outright said he only had three matches left that he was he was doing his three cruiserweight title matches and he was gone. Yeah, well, he this was playing to survive too. He, like he he knows that as long as he was champion, he can stick around, and that's still the case. I I still think that. He's either he's either signed already or he's going to be signed after this. I don't think he's I don't think he's playing for free anymore. I think, considering uh, I believe tonight the the true finals of Group A versus Group B, um, this is his fifth match, correct? Yeah, yeah. So he went he went two and one plus the uh, he went two and one plus the tiebreaker. So he was on a three match win streak. He's three and one right now. So that, yeah, that's four. Well, let me get my calculator. Three plus one. Yeah, well, you know, um, 
you know, really quickly, you know, again, John, thank you for watching and being with us. Thinks he loses the match tonight, but he's going to keep his job in the long run. Yeah, he said that last week. That's John Smith from last week. So that's what he said last week that he was going to win uh, last week, but lose tonight to Phantasma. I uh, I think they're going to run with it because here here we go. I I, I forgot that he was from England. If they're going to do something with with Takeover Dublin with Jordan Devlin fighting whoever the in, interim champion is to kind of unify the championships, I think it would be really cool to have Drake Maverick over in the UK, um, in that match against Jordan Devlin. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I think uh, I think uh, Drake Maverick uh, taking the title tonight would be the um, smart and right decision to make. Yeah, and it's I. I if Fantas- I'm not saying Phantasma can't win it. I just think this is like this is his debut. This is the first time we're seeing him. That that'd be pretty impressive on his part, where he just shows up on TV out of nowhere with no promo, no nothing. Uh, I think he was the second week of the first round. Before, you know, I think there was a promo before we saw him, but he didn't even he didn't know the guy was in NXT other than if you know we looked on social media, they saw that they signed him. Um, yeah, it's not he, very he long. nothing until him and Jake Atlas kind of just showed up out of nowhere. Yeah, and I don't. I don't know if they give Phantasm a belt because this is you know first go around, but that'd be pretty impressive if he takes it. Oh no, hundred percent. I mean, you know, you think historically, it's not very often that somebody comes in and uh, takes a title in their first match. Um, you know, Carlito did it in two thousand and three against John Cena with the U.S. Uh, title. Santino Morella did it in the uh, when they went to Italy. Uh, yeah. He beat Umaga with the help of Bobby Lashley, of course. Um, You're missing the most but- famous one of all. The giant. Yes. How can I forget? So you it's know, the Big Show beat Hulk Hogan to become WCW World Champion in his first ever match. So, you know, it's not. It's very, um, very rare to see somebody do that their first go around. So, if they do it, maybe they have really, really high potential for this guy. Or they have really big plans for him. Yeah. Yep. So it should be a great match tonight. We got that match tonight. Um, two other things. Uh, like I said, we had uh, Timmy the Thatcher beat Matt Riddle. I know you didn't catch the pit fight, Ty. I thought that was a lot of fun. Um, I think we nailed the head, nail on the head last week that, you know, put this, you know, X amount of years ago as a Lions Den match with Ken Shamrock versus Steve Blackman or Ken Shamrock and Owen Hart. Um, that was – Kenny Shamrock would have loved to be in that thing last night. I'm sure uh, last week. I'm sure it was. But that was actually really cool. I hope they do that again at some point. I don't know if you have the right two wrestlers um, to be able to do that. Maybe you could throw Sony Deville and Lacey Evans because they have these amateur MMA backgrounds. All of a sudden, I didn't know. Especially Lacey, you know, Sony Deville we, uh, Deville. we knew had MMA. I didn't know Lacey Evans was some kind of amateur wrestler. You want to throw them in the line, in the, the pit? That'd yeah. Cool. All right, Al. Yeah. It's that time. What time is that, Ty? We're looking forward to NXT in your house. We're going to make some picks. There you go. Oh, we got the graphics. Oh, I thought you forgot course. about those. I thought we were going to be doing that as we go along. Of course, every pick we do, every time we do a pick'em on the show, is presented by Pro Wrestling Pick'em. Play against your friends. Oh, play wow. Against your friends. I came. I got the. I, I got. Lo- everything's loaded, ready to go today. There you go. ProWrestlingPickem.com. Play against your friends. Play against the universe. There you go. It's a beautiful logo my guy designed for me. Yeah. Look. Take a look at it. It's gorgeous. It's got the nice shine to it. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice shine. You know, blends with the 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 red around the W. It's beautiful. Yeah. I, I couldn't see. I was in, I was getting blocked by the P. I couldn't say. Yeah. That looks good. Yeah. It's a beautiful logo. That's it. So, all right, Tyler, I'll set you up and you knock them down, okay? Because I got all the notes. For those who don't know, like I said, all these stats, all these numbers that I have, they are on ProWrestlingPickem.com. In the resource section, uh, the NXT stuff is a little bit towards the back. I do need to get that a little more organized. Uh, there's a lot of title history. There's a lot of WrestleMania. There's Rumble Survivor Series. And uh, I like to track the takeovers as well. So uh, the first match we'll talk about, Todd, we got Finn Balor and Damian Priest. Um. Damien Priest uh, jumped Finn Balor. Uh, we didn't know it was him at first. I guess he jumped him backstage. Balor was supposed to be fighting the Velveteen Dream, if I remember correctly. Uh, Balor was trying to hunt that guy out who did it. Priest admitted it was him, hit it with the billy club, and cost him the match and made Cameron Grimes 
Victor. Uh, I remember that match very well. I didn't see any interference, though, from Damian Priest. I think that was a straight-up win for Cameron Grimes. <laughs> but uh, Finn Balor was a record of 10-1 and one at NXT TakeOver events. He's actually tied for the most wins in TakeOver history with Asuka. So he, uh, we could see history on Sunday night if Finn Balor picks up a win against Damian Priest, who is currently 0-1. Uh, he was in uh, at War Games 3. Uh, he was in a triple threat match. Uh, with a winner face Adam Cole at Survivor Series. Uh, he lost that. Pete Dunne uh, won that match. It was Pete Dunne, Damian Priest, and Killian Dane. And then uh doesn't really count, I guess. How do you feel that TakeOver Tampa match that wasn't actually a TakeOver? It was on NXT. Those, I don't think I, – I think the long run is I'm not going to count those sorts of TakeOver records, but I just kind of put an asterisk so if they won or lost. I wouldn't. Yeah. No, but, uh, that match. Had, uh, the North American title, triple threat. But – um. I, uh, I don't know, Todd, we'll let you speak first on this. I'll throw the numbers out. You speak first. So the first question I'm going to ask, because okay. obviously of everything I've been missing lately, um, are we getting Finn Balor or are we getting the Demon? Because that we, makes I, a very no, big difference. This is the Prince. I, I We haven't seen the Demon since Bray Wyatt took him out. And no, I'm sorry, he didn't even get the Demon then. No, he got that was that was at the Nassau Coliseum. God damn. Um, no, I think the last time we saw the Demon was did he beat Lashley at Mania? I know the Demon beat Lashley at Mania for the Intercontinental Title at thirty five. Right, that been the last time we saw him. <coughs> that might be the last time we saw the Demon. No, the Demon. This, I, I think this is strictly this is this is the Prince. This is this is not. We're, we're not going to get the Demon for a while. I don't think. I think they. I think they made him a face again. Because whatever the, he was supposed to do with Walter for WrestleMania weekend, and 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 su supposedly maybe win the NXT UK Championship, um, I think they kind of turned him face after after the Johnny Gargano thing. Uh, but give me Damian him. Priest. What's that? I'm going to take Damian Priest. Okay. I don't think I don't think Finn Balor needs it. Okay. Or I don't think he needs a win. Uh, obviously, he's proof right now. Even if he loses, it's gonna be he's gonna be fine. He'll still be he'll be on yeah. NXT four days later. So I'm gonna take Damian Priest. Um, that you know, obviously for a guy that's already been through NXT in Finn Balor, um, I you know it, there's not much for him to do right now. Depending on what happens with the title match, which we're gonna get to later. Yeah, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna go with Finn here. Obviously, ten and one's a tough record to go against. He's seven and one in singles competition. Uh, his only loss uh, was to Samoa Joe in a steel cage at uh, NXT The End, and that end was specifically, I think, named for him because uh, he was getting called up right after that. But uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I think if we're gonna go the route tie that we we talked about uh, in the first couple episodes when we kind of came up with the NXT Championship uh, timetable going forward. Um, I, I, I think Finn Balor will be the next person to challenge Adam Cole. So I think Finn Balor needs to win this um, to give himself. If he loses this, it's, it's not going to make sense if he goes for the NXT title. Even though, like I said, you know Adam Cole broke the record. Adam Cole uh, has now been champ for a year as of Monday. He won it June 1st uh, of last year. So it's officially been a year for him. Uh, so it makes sense that you know him and Balor go at it again because now they're both going to claim to be the greatest NXT champion of all time. And I think uh, in order to do that, uh, Finn Balor has to uh, dispose of a very motivated, motivated uh, Damian Priest. Honestly, if I don't, th in my head, if if I didn't think that Finn Balor was going to be the next, I probably would have picked Damian Priest too. I mean, Priest is motivated right now. This is this is a good look for him. Okay, I'll take that. I, I definitely uh, didn't look at it that way. I'm still going to keep my pick where it is, though. Um, looking at the next match, um, someone's going to be making a debut. Yeah, Karrion Cross making his NXT TakeOver debut. There's nothing under his name right now where Tommaso Ciampa has a whole bunch. Ciampa is 6-6 six and six in TakeOver history. Uh, he's 4-2 and two in singles competition, though. Uh, a lot of his uh, early matches, obviously, were with uh, Johnny Gargano at DIY, and uh, they actually had an awful record. Uh, I think they went one and five. 
one and four, one and five as a tag. They just, they just not, they just didn't. They had put on a lot of amazing matches, but they, they won one of them. They won the NXT tag titles against the Revival. But um, yeah, this is uh, we we said this since day one. Ty, uh, Karen Karen Cross is he's not gonna. He's, he's not losing for a while. Uh, Chompa's, Chompa's in trouble. I'll be shocked if Chompa wins this. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I guess he could roll him up and you know, they could do something silly because maybe it is too obvious that Karrion Cross is going to win this, but I can't. You can't bet against them right now. It's very hard to um, see the way that Karrion Cross has been pushed through uh, NXT television with promos and this and that and his on screen work. It's kind of like. Um, how do you pick against them? You know what I mean? No, you can't. No, you, you can't exactly. So uh, I want to give a chance, though. I mean, I, I don't, I don't see how. Like I said, it has to be some kind of like roll up rinky thing, just some kind of cheap way where it doesn't make Karen. What I don't want to happen. We talked about this. Like what happened to Lance Archer at Double or Nothing? Like that was. It, it can't be what's what's Chompa's finishing move? The what's it called? The fairy tale ending. It can't be two fairy tale endings and it's over. Right, you know, like that, that that didn't make Lance Archer look good, and I don't think that you know, anything that's like that, like this, this shouldn't be. This should be carrying Cross in a good match. Hopefully, this will showcase um, just how uh, good and athletic he is, uh, where the people will like it. Um, and then he just hits. Uh, I guess he does that submission move as his finisher, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I I, I expect <clears throat> this match could easily be. Uh, Match of the night, uh, as long as it, yeah, it goes goes well. Um, we also have three. We'll do a prediction, Ty. I would, I would put it. I would make a nameplate right now. Breaking news: Ty thinks this will be <laughs> match of the night. That'll be something. <laughs> I, I, if we're going match of the night predictions, I'm, I'm going to go with Keith Lee and Gargano. I think that match. We're going to talk about that next. <laughs> there you go, Ty. If you can't poke fun at yourself, who can you poke fun at? There you go. <laughs> exactly. We do have three title matches on the on the card for now. We still have NXT tonight. Something yep. can happen. Maybe the tag titles get thrown on there. Yep. But for now, we're, we're banking gonna, on it. Yeah. For now, we'll bank on the ones we have. Um, so the first title match we're going to be looking at is Keith Lee defending his title against Johnny Gargano. I, I, I think, think you, you got a couple of this. Like I said, I kind of wish this was a mixed tag. We talked, we touched on this a little bit last week, Ty. What are your opinions? Should this have been a mixed tag? Would you have gotten Mia Yim and Candice LeRae involved in this instead of having them fight tonight? Um, No. No? Okay. Well, <clears throat> here's the thing. Um, I'm going to include my pick in the whole thing, too. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to pick Gargano to win. Um, I know we don't believe in rumors here, so if you need to strike me with something the next time you see me, I understand. Um, but there's a lot of talk going around that Keith Lee can make his way to Raw soon. Okay. If that's truly the case, I don't see the North American title coming with him. Ty, that's how rumors start. That is how rumors start. That's how rumors start. Ty, you upset me with that one. You upset me. It's okay, though, Ty. It's okay. I think deep um, into things. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going with Johnny Gargano here. I and mean, if they're going to do some stuff here where uh, you know the Garganos are going to try to take control, um, might as well just you, you start with this. You know, and like I said, if Keith Lee gets called up, that's fine. I, I would have liked to have seen this a mixed tag. I think it would have been fun. I went with, I would have went with the Garganos anyway. I'm going to go with the sweep too. I'm going to go Candice Larry uh, tonight. I know we didn't talk about tonight's matches. I'm going to go Candice Larry tonight too. Um, I just don't. Okay. Actually, you know what? I might go with Mia. Yeah, tonight will be a toss up. Tonight's a toss up. I can see yeah. Mia winning. Uh, Mia. <laughs> Mia. Mia Yim winning. <laughs> Try saying that, you know, five times, whatever. Love um, uh, Mia Yim winning and then uh, Candice cheating for the win, uh, to, you know, to get the, the buyback on uh, Sunday night. Yes, yeah, so I'll, go, I'll go Mia Yim tonight and I'll go Johnny Gargano uh, winning the title. Uh, Johnny Gargano, by the way, um, 
He is the all-time leader in takeover appearances. This will be his 17th takeover. out of I believe this is the 26th or 27th, somewhere in there. Um, and that's if you include – I included uh, NXT Arrival, their first show, which is technically not a takeover, but it was their first ever NXT Network special. I think uh, Paige beat Emma. I think that was the, uh, the finals of the first ever women's tournament. Uh, I believe that was that night. Um, I think Adrian Neville beat both Dallas out of his. I gotta, I gotta look back at that. But uh, he also is four and twelve, and twelve is the most losses in Takeover history. So, equivalent to how Shawn Michaels is Mr. WrestleMania with having the second most losses of all time, they call him Johnny, Johnny Takeover, and having the most losses of all time. Yeah, fun fact. So looking ahead, we have the NXT Women's Championship match. Triple Threat featuring Charlotte Flair, Io Shirai, and the return of Rhea Ripley. Yep. What you got? All right. So this is Charlotte Flair's first takeover since NXT TakeOver Unstoppable, which I want to say was back in 2016 because that's when they, uh, the three of them – uh, Charlotte, Sasha, and Becky were called up. Uh, her last match was actually uh, she tag team with Bailey, and she defeated Dana Brooke and Emma in a tag team match. So she wasn't even in the championship picture that night. I want to say the championship match that night uh, was actually the match that kind of got me gaga over Sasha Banks. It was Sasha Banks defending against Bailey, and I kind of lost it. I think that was like the first women's match I've seen in a long time where I was like, "Holy crap! Like this was amazing." So um, that really got me into it. That really got me into Sasha and Becky and everything that was going on with NXT as a whole. Um, fun little fact also, the NXT Women's Championship record, the champions record, they're 21 and 5. So there's only been five times that a championship, uh, the Women's Championship has changed hands at TakeOver. Like I said, 21 wins, eight of them are Asuka, and I think six of them are Shayna Baszler. So they, they counted for over – you know, between 50, 60, 70% of those wins. And they accounted for two of the losses because both Asuka and Shayna Baszler won uh, the NXT title at a takeover as well. So that's just fun. The, the Women's Championship, you don't see it too often, Ty. Uh, you don't see it too often. Uh, Charlotte's 4-1, and one, Rhea Ripley undefeated at 2-0. and oh, And Io Shirai is at 1-3. and three. Um, I, would, I would like to see something... I, I'd like to see Eo win. I'd like to see that. I like to see them circle back to Eo and Candice for the women's title if the Garganos are going to take over. I think that's kind of uh, where I'd like to see that go. Um, I don't know if they just give this back to Rhea right away. I don't know if you know. Every time I bet against Charlotte, she always wins. So I feel like this is set up for Charlotte to win. And plus, if you want to ha- keep on having her um, around these young girls and they have keep on having Charlotte having fresh matches, I think then she's. I think that she keeps it. So my, my pick is going to be Charlotte. Yeah. Um, but I honestly, this this can go any which way possible. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard. Uh, excuse me. It's hard for me to make my pick anything that's not Charlotte Flair. Um, I don't see her dropping the title right away, um, especially to Rhea Ripley. Um, not because I don't think Rhea Ripley is going to get it back, but because I feel as if they can get a lot more out of this story with those two. So I see, I do see Rhea Ripley taking her title back eventually. I just don't see it being so quick. Yeah. Yep. And, and then, then uh, it's the Charlotte's got a new friend too. She, uh, I don't know if she's now friends with um, Chelsea Green after Wednesday. Chelsea Green ended up being Charlotte Flair's mystery tag team partner. Um, it wasn't CM Punk as we discussed. And the <laughs> Um, and then and so consequently after on uh, uh, WWE.com exclusive, uh, Chelsea Green fired Robert Stone. <laughs> she doesn't need him anymore. So uh, I don't know uh, where they, I guess Robert Stone, is, uh, he'll probably just go right with Aaliyah. I know Aaliyah has been looking to get in with him. Um, so hopefully that'd be something fun to give her to do. Uh, I'm a yeah. fan of Aaliyah. I like her. Um, she's Canadian. So let's, let's have fun with that. <laughs> And we have the last match of the night, the main event. For the NXT Championship, we're looking at Adam Cole defending his title against the Velveteen Dream. 
Yes. Oh, yeah, my numbers. Uh, Adam Cole, sneaky takeover record. It's amazing how long the Undisputed Era has been around. It just seems, I feel like, I feel like they just got here. And this is Adam Cole's already, I think it's his, uh, his 11th takeover. Yeah, it's his 11th takeover appearance. He's 65. He did have, I know that equals 11 also. Um, he did have double duty one night where he won the NXT North American Championship in the ladder match, and then he went on to defend the NXT Tag Team titles with Kyle O'Reilly because Bobby Fish got hurt, and that's when Roderick Strong jumped, and that was, and they won the Dusty Cup that night. It was a great night. It was NXT New Orleans, if I remember correctly. Uh, Takeover New Orleans. Um, Adam Cole had a day. Uh, but he's 6-5. and five. He's 4-3 and three in singles competition. Uh, he's 3-1 and one in championship matches as champion with three title defenses. All three of those uh, where recently he defeated Johnny Gargano uh, to retain in the two out of three falls match. He defeated Tommaso Ciampa. Uh, where's the other one? Oh, I know the other title defense what I just mentioned when uh, him and Kyle O'Reilly defended the tag titles. So he's on a little bit of a one streak here. Uh, the NXT Championship is 15, 10, and 1 all time at uh, TakeOver. So it, uh, it, it's been a while. Uh, the champion's on a six, uh, six match. They've won six of the last seven. And the one loss was uh, John, Johnny Takeover's loss to Adam Cole at uh, NXT 25. Um, I'm going Adam Cole with this. I don't see any reason to take it off him. Like I said, we've been we have to we have everything figured out. Uh, if you want to go back, I did hear see something about NXT getting call ups, and I, I I get I'm not clicking on the articles. I don't I don't I don't want to be away. I don't want rumors to start. Um, but I guess they are going to start calling them up. I know Matt Rillard's all been called up. I think Dream should be called up too. I think you should put Dream up there. So yeah. I think, uh, give Adam Cole the win. Set up Adam Cole and Finn Balor for uh, SummerSlam weekend. Yeah, it, it's very uh, like I said, it's, it's hard to bet against Adam Cole right now, especially in a time where the company and where have you been all show? I needed your opinion like a half an hour ago. Um, like that? Yeah, I finally, finally woke up. Oh, um, morning. Yeah, you, you bum. Go pay some taxes. Uh, yeah, it's hard to bet against Adam Cole, especially in a time where the company is really going to start to heavily rely on their bigger names. Um, and I think Adam Cole is obviously, arguably, the biggest one they have right now. Yeah, uh, so, no reason. I don't. I don't think he'll get called up. He's got. He's got to stay on Wednesdays in this. In this. In this war. And I know that there's another. You know, rumors going around. His contract's coming up in the summer. They're going to throw a ton of money at him. There's no. They're not letting Adam Cole go anywhere. You know, yeah. they're, gonna, they're, gonna make, they're gonna make it that he he can't he, he's not gonna be able to afford to leave. I know his wife and his buddies are over in AEW, but like, there's no way he's going anywhere. Yeah, there's no way. I I just don't see it unless he's truly genuinely that unhappy, which I highly doubt is the case. Oh, he's loving. He's gotta be loving life right now. Triple H treats him like a god. Oh yeah, there's no way he there's no way he's going anywhere. So. Uh, so yeah, so those are our picks for uh, NXT TakeOver. Uh, Taj, want to uh, promote real quick that uh, you can make your picks as well on uh, ProWrestlingPick'em.com. Throw the graphic up there, Taj, and I got my business cards. Too. There, there we go. Um, there is a uh, – you can start your own pool with your friends if you want to start a league, uh, a private league, uh, with you and your buddies. That's what I have. Um, that's what I've been doing. Uh, I have about 40 people in my pool. It's a lot of fun. But you can also uh, join the Essential Wrestling Podcast public pool. Uh, that's open to everybody. Uh, Tyler and I are in that. I believe John Smith and John DeConte are also going to join in. I know John Smith has been chiming in all night. And we appreciate that, John. Thank you. Uh, John DeConte. Yeah, John DeConte loves the new, uh, the new graphics. Uh, he just chimed in as well. So uh, please join and play against us. We'd love to hear uh, – we'd love to see who you picks. We want to see uh, – it doesn't matter who wins as long as we all beat Tyler. That's pretty much the, the, the goal of – Yeah, I'm beating you, so it does not matter. <laughs> so this is a fun little week in wrestling. Yeah, they've got a great weekend coming up. Takeover is going to be great. I'm happy to do it in your house. I hope to do the house set. That's going to be a lot of fun. All right. So, so we got the Women's Tag Team Championships. I know Tyler kind of glossed over that. First of all, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross – they, they've uh, they've been kind of tripping over themselves lately. They had uh, Alexa lost on Friday to Sasha, and then Nikki lost on Monday to to, to Billy Kay. Um, they got a title match on SmackDown against the original champs. 
Bailey and Sasha, who do you got in that one? <sighs> Bailey and Sasha. Really? You need to call new champs? Yeah. All right. You know, I'm going to stick with Alexa and Nikki. I, I kind of hope they do some kind of you know fun little triple threat uh, with all three teams have a crossover um, at Backlash with the Iconics, with Bailey and Sasha, and with uh, Nikki and I could see Alexa running out double DQ, set up a triple threat. Yeah, because the Iconics, the, the, the Iconics are going to want another shot after Billy Kay's victory. And the, and the thing is, you have the Iconics who had that slap her around the world. And Sasha and Bailey are, are on eggshells, uh, pretty much twenty four seven. You know, you know it's coming, and it's been you know it's been coming for the past five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years now. Uh, you just don't know when. So you kind of have two teams that are kind of spontaneous, uh, spontaneous, ready to combust. Um, I think the tag champs will uh, eventually just walk away from all this, um, as remaining as champs, or the other two teams might break up, which. I don't know, Tyler. Maybe one episode we can sit down at the women's division in front of us and try to make new tag teams here because between other than these three, I, there's no, yeah, there's nothing. No, we, that'd be a fun episode. We could do that. Or put Dakota Kai and Tegan Knox back together. That'd be that's nice. What do. That's what I want to do. <sighs> so we'll let's see what else do we got for tonight. Hmm, we're gonna go. We're gonna be on our merry way soon but we definitely want you to join our friends kurt kenny jim and petro tonight at eight o'clock on facebook live every wednesday and saturdays when you can catch them on the k and k sports show and any if you're looking for more information on their shows you can hit them up on facebook through the i-95 anywhere else you can possibly find them check them out tonight at eight o'clock after us al we're gonna break we're gonna break news for the first time here really we're gonna break news this is going out before it gets to the social medias. Remember, you're hearing this here first. The Prime wow. Home Rundown Zoom series, starting from tomorrow night, is going to feature San Jose Sharks radio voice, Dan Rosanowski. Oh, nice. sorry, it's going to be Monday, not tomorrow. Oh, the date changed. Okay. So there we, you just, go. we broke some news. Nice. <laughs> See, Tyler, I asked for it last week. If anyone ever needs us to break any news whatsoever, if you want us to break news? If you want us to break wind, we'll do it. Yep, and yeah, <laughs> I'm glad we broke news first. But uh, tomorrow night there is an interview. Actually, it's going to be the prime time prime time rundown Zoom interview series. Our good friend Joey Jarzinka is going to chant with Arizona Diamondbacks minor league single A affiliate Vasilia Rawhide broadcaster Jillian Guerin. She's the first female play by play commentator in the 80 year history of the California League. So you're definitely going to want to be there to check that out. Very good pronunciation of Vasily. I know you were worried about that. I was later. terrified of that before. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as we go, you know where to find us. We'll show you how to find us if you don't already know how. You can look for us, same place, this time next week. We're next Wednesday. week we'll be, back on, we'll be back on Wednesday next week. Uh, and then after that, we will return back to Tuesday nights. Yep. Tyler, anything else? I got nothing, but the cat clearly has plenty to say. But you can to say. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in tonight. Our first episode live on Facebook Live. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. We'll always be on YouTube. Replays of all of our episodes will be on uh, ProWrestlingPickin.com. We have uh, the Essential Red, uh, Wrestling Podcast archives there. You can rewatch all of our old episodes. Um, see how long we've come. we got a new set. we got new logos. we got banners now. On day one, um, I'm pretty sure we, did, we didn't even have an end catchphrase. Uh, that like I said last week, our friend John DeCani uh, came with us. But um, thank you so much, everybody, for listening. We'll see you next Wednesday night. Alexa Bliss, as always, we will always love you, and we will wish you luck. And everybody, we wish you luck in your future endeavors. Hold on. Oh, man. Endeavors. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Take care, everyone. <laughs>